Imagine being an engineer in 1972, carrying a five-pound mechanical calculator that costs as much as a small car. Now imagine someone telling you they've created a calculator that fits in your shirt pocket, runs on batteries, and can perform complex scientific functions instantly. You'd think they were describing science fiction. But one company turned this impossible dream into reality. And in doing so, they didn't just create a product. They sparked a revolution that would change mathematics, engineering, and education forever. This is the story of the HP 35, the device that put the power of a computer room into the palm of your hand. T-H-E-R-O-B-L-E-M, in the late 1960s, engineers, scientists, and students faced a daily nightmare. Complex calculations were unavoidable, yet the tools available were painfully inadequate. Slide rules had been the standard for over three centuries. These analog devices could multiply, divide, and calculate logarithms, but they required skill, provided limited accuracy, and were maddeningly slow for complex operations. The alternative wasn't much better. Desktop mechanical calculators weighed between 5 and 40 pounds, cost thousands of dollars, and could only perform basic arithmetic. For trigonometric functions, logarithms, or exponential calculations, you still needed those printed mathematical tables, a slide rule, or access to a room-sized mainframe computer. Bill Hewlett, co-founder of Hewlett Packard, understood this frustration intimately. He had spent years using slide rules during his own engineering work, and he dreamed of something better. During a business trip in 1968, Hewlett sketched an idea on a napkin a pocket sized calculator that could handle scientific functions. When he returned to HP's headquarters in Palo Alto, California, he presented this vision to his engineering team with a simple challenge make it happen. The the team looked at Hewlett's requirements with a mixture of excitement and terror. He wanted a calculator small enough to fit in a shirt pocket, capable of performing logarithmic, trigonometric, and exponential functions, battery, powered, and accurate to 10 decimal places. Oh, and it needed to be affordable enough for individual professionals to purchase. This seemed impossible. The technology of the era simply wasn't ready for such ambition. The project nearly died several times during development. Many engineers within HP believed it couldn't be done, at least not with existing technology. But the team, led by engineers Tom Osborne, France Rade, and Chung Tung, refused to accept defeat. The first major obstacle was size. Creating a calculator that could fit in a pocket meant completely rethinking circuit design. The team developed custom integrated circuits specifically for this project. They created three chips that would handle all the calculator's functions, a revolutionary approach at the time when most electronic devices used dozens of individual components. Next came the display. The team chose red LED displays, which were relatively new technology. These seven segment displays could show numbers clearly and used less power than other options available at the time. The display would show 10 digits plus a two digit exponent, giving users the precision Hewlett demanded. Power consumption presented another enormous challenge. Battery technology in the early 1970s was primitive by today's standards. The team had to optimize every circuit to minimize power draw while maintaining calculation speed. They eventually settled on a rechargeable battery pack that could power the calculator for several hours of continuous use. THEBRIAKHROGH, the most impressive achievement wasn't the hardware, it was the mathematics. How do you program a calculator with extremely limited memory to calculate sine, cosine, tangent, logarithms, and exponential functions? The team couldn't simply store lookup tables, there wasn't enough memory. Instead, they implemented clever algorithms that could calculate these functions using basic arithmetic operations. For example, to calculate a logarithm, the calculator would use a series approximation, breaking down the complex function into a sequence of additions, subtractions, multiplications, and divisions. All of this happened in milliseconds invisible to the user. The calculator used reverse Polish notation or RPN for input. Instead of typing 2 fla 3 ta, users would enter 2 enter 3 fla. This seemed awkward at first, but RPN offered significant advantages. It eliminated the need for parentheses, reduced the number of keystrokes for complex calculations, and was more efficient for the calculator's limited memory. Once users adapted to RPN, many found they could never go back to traditional notation. 
By late 1971, the team had working prototypes. They were slightly larger than Hewlett's original specification, measuring about 6 inches tall, 3 inches wide, and just over an inch thick. But they worked, and they worked beautifully. The calculator could perform additions in milliseconds and complex trigonometric functions in under a second. THELUNCH on January 4, 1972, Hewlett Packard held a press conference in New York City to unveil their creation. They called it the HP 35, named for the 35 keys on its keyboard. The demonstration left the assembled journalists and engineers stunned. Here was a device that could instantly calculate problems that would take minutes with a slide rule or require expensive desktop calculators. The price was $395, equivalent to about $2,500 today. This was expensive, certainly beyond the reach of students or casual users. But for professional engineers and scientists who had been paying similar amounts for mechanical calculators with far less capability, the HP 35 was an absolute bargain. HP's market research had suggested they might sell 10,000 units. This conservative estimate proved laughably wrong. The HP 35 became an immediate sensation. Engineers and scientists lined up to purchase them. Universities began recommending them to students. NASA bought them for astronauts and mission controllers. The initial production run sold out within weeks. Stories emerged of the calculator's impact. Pilots used them for navigation calculations. Surveyors took them into the field. Medical researchers used them for statistical analysis. The HP 35 appeared on television shows and in movies as a symbol of cutting-edge technology. It became a status symbol among technical professionals. THEC production continued until 1975, by which time HP had sold over 300,000 units. But the HP 35's true impact went far beyond sales numbers. It had proven that complex computing could be miniaturized and made accessible. It sparked an explosion of innovation in calculator technology. Within months, competitors scrambled to create their own scientific calculators. Texas Instruments entered the market. So did Sharp, Canon, and dozens of other companies. Prices dropped rapidly as technology improved and competition intensified. By the late 1970s, scientific calculators cost less than $50. By the 1980s, they were standard equipment for high school students. The HP 35 also changed engineering education forever. Slide rule skills, once essential for any technical professional, became obsolete within a decade. Universities stopped teaching slide rule proficiency and adjusted their curricula to reflect the new reality where complex calculations could be performed instantly. This allowed education to focus more on problem, solving and conceptual understanding rather than computational mechanics. The calculator's influence extended into computer science and digital design. The custom integrated circuits developed for the HP 35 pioneered techniques that would become standard in later electronic devices. The optimization challenges the team faced and solved informed the development of microprocessors and mobile computing. Today, original HP 35 calculators are prized collectibles. Working units sell for hundreds or even thousands of dollars to enthusiasts and collectors. They're displayed in technology museums alongside other revolutionary devices. HP continued the legacy with dozens of subsequent calculator models, many of which remain popular with engineers and students today, still using that distinctive RPN input method. The HP 35 reminds us that true innovation often comes from recognizing a universal frustration and refusing to accept that solutions are impossible. Bill Hewlett saw engineers struggling with inadequate tools and dared to imagine something better. His team faced technical obstacles that seemed insurmountable, yet they persevered, creating something that changed the world. That small calculator, designed to fit in a shirt pocket, didn't just calculate numbers. It calculated a new future where powerful computing belonged to everyone. If you enjoyed learning about this revolutionary device that changed science and engineering forever, please subscribe to our channel for more stories about the innovations that shaped our modern world. What calculation tool do you remember using in school? Share your memories in the comments below.